Wednesday, um, after school, every Wednesday we wear red. Uh, what it took was those our relationships with other coworkers, building strategic relationships with the community members, right? And the goal is to stop an active ice raid. Our working conditions are their learning conditions, right? And so when we're fighting for better working conditions, we're fighting for better learning conditions for them too. Our next speaker is from Los Angeles, and uh, she will discuss the Koreatown Popular Assembly. Uh, hi, everybody. I am a dispatcher for the rapid response network that we have established in Koreatown, which is here, where you're at, right? So essentially, after Trump got elected, a lot of people were kind of down for stuff, right? They're like, okay, what are we gonna do? What's the next step? Fuck this shit, I don't want any fucking fascism, right? So people were, there was momentum gathered. There was protests at LAX, there was protests like, like happening like in the snap of a finger, people showing up. And so as a result of that momentum that was getting started, uh, there were popular assemblies that were being created throughout LA, I think throughout the United States, but specifically in this case, throughout LA County. And of those popular assemblies, I think it was only, which was created around um, 2017, February 2017, uh, the Koreatown Popular Assembly was the only one that kind of um, made it through, right? People stopped showing up. After, after the momentum had essentially died and, and people didn't know what the next step was other than to showing up to protest, which is fine. You know, people wanted something that was gonna, okay, what's the next step? If I show up, what's the next step? What is something that is gonna directly affect my community that other people are concerned about? What can I do, right? And so the Popular Assembly, essentially in K-Town, developed goals specifically that address the needs and concerns of the community. In this area, there is a high working class and immigrant population. And so, after meeting several times, there was two things that came out of the assembly itself. One, the sanctuary schools, and two, the rapid response network. And so, the sanctuary school was more of a praxis of something that was already initiated in LA. The Mayor, Gar Mayor Garcetti had passed something that said, oh, well, California is a sanctuary state. Uh, the schools are a sanctuary school, but it didn't really do anything. It, it looked good on paper, but nobody was really trained to, you know, what, what, what can they do if ICE shows up at, at the school, right? Who do they call? What, what kind of direct action can they do? other than, okay, let's just wait and call the police, maybe they'll help us. Like, they didn't really do anything. And so, the idea was that if people are trained, faculty, uh, students, and other workers at the schools, if people are trained to know what to do in a situation where ICE shows up, then this could be something that could really like dra drastically change how people how popular power is developed. So the idea is that at the sanctuary school, if say ICE shows up, you call the rapid response network, and in the meantime, you do anything to block the ICE agent from coming in and taking a kid or worker, or whoever. And so here comes in the rapid response network. So the rapid response network, unlike others which only offered like legal advice, like okay, here's a number to an immigration lawyer, here's, here are these legal services. Um, its goal was to essentially stop an active ICE raid and to document everything. So the Rapid Response Network is a 24-7 hotline that somebody could call um, within LA, specifically in Koreatown, in which somebody will answer and if there's an active ICE raid or you see an ICE van or whatever, they will send somebody out to investigate and to hopefully stop someone from being detained. So what I do, I'm a dispatcher and you know, it, it, we take shifts 
in different times and everybody kind of contributes their own part, right? Because this was concerns that were brought about from the popular assembly, which is ultimately a reflection of the community itself. And so well, the services we offer in calling this number is that we offer English, Spanish, Korean, uh, Bengali, and I think Russian, if I'm not mistaken. So if something were to happen at 1 a.m. or at 5 o'clock in the morning or in the middle of a work week at you know, lunchtime, you can call this number and somebody will show up and the goal is to stop an active ICE raid, right? So why, why is this so important? It's important because it's directly from the people, by the people. It's not operating with uh, a representative. It's not a um, nonprofit. It's something that people do on their own time to help their community to go a step further other than showing up to protest, right? Because ultimately, yes, protests are cool and fun to show up to, you know, but it's, it's like, what do we do past that? How, how can we actually change the things that are happening in our neighborhood, right? Because this was also a result of DACA being rescinded, which alarmed a lot of people, and rightly so. And so I think what I would adv advocate for is for people to develop their own rapid response networks in different parts of the country, because that would be a really powerful tool to have, right, nationwide, someone calling a number and knowing that they're not going to be detained because there's going to be people there backing you up, stopping, you know, an ice raid from happening. And that's it. That's all I have. <laughs>